Hello, this is Rodrigo from Take Right Action, and today I have two amazing people here, Elena Raponsieva and Dimitar Petrov. They are from Bulgaria, and they are trying to get funded their own project that is called The Golden Apple, which is an amazing animation based on Balkan folklore. So uh, thank you for being here, and welcome. Thank Thanks. You. Thanks for your invite. Thanks for your invite, yeah. <laughs> so first to get started, uh, for people who don't know about the project and about you, uh, can you give us a little bit about your history? Uh, how did you meet each other? How did you start this project and all that? Uh, well, uh, Mitko here, he's the creator of the Golden Apple series project. And uh, he started developing the project more than three years ago. And I entered the project maybe about a year and a half after yeah. the start. Yeah, I think it was a year and a half. Yeah, so when I entered the project, um, the first key locations and uh, character designs, they were already developed. So uh, basically, he met me and said, look, I need a producer. I need someone to help me organize the work and people and so on. And at first, I went with the initial idea to say no because I was super busy. But uh, when I saw the artwork and uh, I heard the story, and I immediately fell in love because up until this point, I had never seen Balkan legends and folklore transmitted into an animation world. world and just it immediately captured me. Well, my story starts like a year and a half before I met her. <laughs> so it's a, that's like three years ago. And uh, I've been developing this project for more than three years now. Mm -hmm. So it started as a personal project of mine, exactly because I had never seen an animated series or an animated movie with uh, Balkan like legends or even architecture styles or things that are typical of this region, which I find very interesting. So I started researching the topic and made some sketches and throwing down some, some ideas for the story. And it eventually grew and uh, I contacted our lead the character designer, uh, Svetla, who she works at Disney as an animator and she designs for us in her spare time. And then I contacted some other people online and we are currently 25 people, I think, right? Yep, in six different countries around the world. So at one point, before we actually even became 25 people, I realized I have my hands full and it's really hard to organize everything, which is when I contacted Elena. And uh, she jumped right into it. And uh, with her help, it grew even more. So it became the 25 people. Yeah, basically, um, when I met uh, Mitko, he had left um, he had left Cartoon Network where he was working before that, and uh, he came back to Bulgaria exactly to develop this yeah. project. And I was at that point uh, working in the film industry. I was doing feature films. I was a producer for that, and specifically in the VFX section, I was a VFX producer. And um, basically, uh, animation was a new challenge for me, but at the same time, it incorporated my, my love. Like, I've always been a fan of animation. And um, as soon as I got the opportunity to apply my skills to that, I was like, yes, it's happening. I'll do it. But when she says a new challenge, uh, you have to realize Bulgaria, there hasn't been an animated series, like a commercial animated series made here in like 25, maybe 30 years. So it's a new challenge for the entire market and basically for the entire art field. There are people that are really good and work on animation productions, but they always work on foreign productions or for foreign companies. So this is the first project, which is like a commercial animated series based on Balkan fantasy and like uh, legends and folklore produced here in Bulgaria. Awesome. And uh, I've seen that trying to do like a Kickstarter campaign. Uh, does this idea came like in the beginning of the project or is just something that uh, came into your mind for you? Uh, sorry, can you repeat the last part of the question? Because internet kind of. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, did you have in mind to do like the crowdfunding, like Kickstarter from the beginning, or is this a solution that you found like lately, uh, let's say in the last year or something like that? Well, 
we were considering different things, actually. Uh, but uh, because this project is so unique, it's something really new and different. I mean, first of all, as I said, there hasn't been a commercial animated series made in Bulgaria for more than like 20 years. So uh, people sometimes react skeptically to what we do. But, but, and also there is nothing based on uh, Bulgarian legends and folklore or Balkan legends and folklore. So using Kickstarter to actually fund our pilot episode and show people that this could be really cool is a really nice way to prove to investors and distributors that there's interest in a project like this. So it was, we were considering different options, but uh, Kickstarter is kind of the direct way to go to people who might be, who will be interested in seeing the Golden Apple series. And it's kind of like, it's a test as well, because, um, well, we managed to get our trailer out, so uh, we're super happy and proud of that. But um, the trailer was received super well here in Bulgaria. People loved it. Just immediately, everyone, um, recognized in this their own cause and they absolutely loved it but the Kickstarter campaign it's it's going to be our test we want to see how people from other cultures and other countries react to um, these new legends and these new characters and so on because um, for us they're they're pretty or nice and so on but they also have a sentimental value so we're kind of biased and we want to see people like with no bias, what do they think of that sort of story? And also something really important that I forgot to say, we've been developing this project for three years with absolutely no funding. Mm -hmm. And the trailer that we made, it was also made like after work hours with no funding whatsoever. So it's, we're really proud that we managed to, to do it and that it looks the way it does. And a huge thank you to our to the entire Golden Apple team for that. Yes, yes. The matter of fact that uh, during during all that time we managed to get people to fall in love with the project so much that after working like nine to six job, they come home from work, they have dinner, and they sit down to work on the Apple. That was just and just pure passion, pure passion. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that because I see, I saw like there was a huge team. Like uh, I kind of kind of understand where you're coming from because uh, we're in El Salvador in, in the whole Central America area. I think there hasn't been uh, any cartoon animation, and we are trying to do it right now. And we are uh, with less than ten people trying to make it happen. Wow. And then I saw like the whole team that you have, and yeah, I wanted to ask this question if that if you had any kind of kind of funds uh, to like to have such a big uh, team, but to see that it was a whole passion project, it, it is really amazing. Although on the other side, I think it's safe to say like it's not a biased opinion on loving the project because we are all over <laughs> the other side of the world here. And people who are watching the trailer here is like, like, oh, when is this coming? <laughs> and it, it, oh, it's, wow. it's Thank you. They, they are still trying to. <laughs> so, so there is a, a a huge positive answer from from people from uh, all these parts of of the world as well. So. That's fantastic. That We're is, really happy uh, to hear that because really, I mean, we've been watching it and we see how people here react, but. We, we always have this like little voice in our heads which kind of says, you know, but it's, it's they're familiar with the, with the world, with the fantasy that's behind this. Maybe we should see how like foreign audiences react to it. Because the Golden Apple, it's a project that from its very development, it's been aimed towards like uh, not just Bulgaria, but like an outside market as well. Because it would be very hard to find financing for a project like this only in Bulgaria. as. As I said, there has never been a commercially animated series here, so all businesses and investors are really skeptical. And that's why we're trying to find uh, investment from outside, and that is a way to approach this. There is another cause about this as well, uh, and this is something that really gets uh, people in. So um, basically, it's the fact that when we say to people, what, like, because both of us lived um, lived abroad. Both of us lived in um, the United Kingdom for a while and I lived in Spain for a while and so on. And when you travel and you meet uh, someone from outside of Bulgaria and you say something about Bulgaria and they either haven't heard of the country 
or what they've heard hasn't been very positive, <laughs> shall we say. And oh, this is, it's, I guess this is perpetuated by the fact that the, the media in general, they like to focus on the negative things. Yeah. And there is a lot of things that remain hidden and the culture is one of these things. And we thought, you know what, maybe it's time we show the world that there is much more to Bulgaria and just the Balkans in general than what the general media would like to, to, to speak. And it has nothing to do with politics. It has to do with magic and spirits and, um, and, and, and um, how do I say, wisdom. It's just the wisdom of the ages because it's it's history and this sort of folklore it's been it's been developed through generations and generations and it's accumulating the human wisdom and knowledge and transfer uh, like transferring it through tales which can be understood by, both by children and adults and we thought you know what we're just going to show these to the world the best way that we know how through animation and it's also really cool as a design challenge for us as designers and animators to do something like this because it's I mean we've never we've all heard these legends growing up but we've never actually seen these creatures in an animated show or even like in modern illustrations so it was really fun to actually sit down and try and turn them into animated characters and you know the the cookie warriors the guys with the magic bells and stuff like that which I find really cool but it's, it, was, it was a really nice design challenge as well, not just like a, a narrative, but as a trying to like creating something new and showing something new in an animated movie. No, definitely. Uh, when I was there, um, I was staying in the, in the Vasilevsky Boulevard. So uh, my friend told me that he was an hero from Bulgaria who, who helped out, uh, like fight the Russians. And I started reading his history, and he, and I was amazed by the history. And then we moved to Bansko, and then we were uh, walking in the town, and then we found another uh, the house of Nevsky, which uh, he seems like to. Uh, to be traveling to find out the Bulgarian history because he was raised by with the Torps. I, I, I don't remember pretty much, but I was like looking up at the whole history of the country and it was like, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> and I wish I could have stayed more because I was only there for like 12 days. But uh, everywhere like we were walking, uh, of course, uh, my friends like they saw the statues all there. Uh, from from life, uh, who is this guy? Who is this? I I, I was uh, always who is this guy? Uh, uh, and learning a lot of history, and I saw like, damn, Bulgaria has like a lot of amazing history here. <laughs> like, uh, and I was just in two towns, <laughs> and and he was telling me, oh, you you're still missing a lot of things here, my friend." <laughs> that's true. That's true, and um, you know, it's it's challenge trying to. Uh, put it into uh, animation design, but it's a good challenge. It's really, it's really cool, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I guess you can see to the in the designs of the Golden Apple, we're trying to mix like traditional local uh, architecture, like the architectural styles and the ornaments in the folklore costumes and stuff, with like a more contemporary Western style. A lot of people have been saying that it reminds them of Samurai Jack and. That's kind of intentional because we're trying to mix something which is really familiar, like the like inspired by the American illustrator Ivan Earl, with like a brand new influence, which is the Eastern European stuff, like the costumes and the architecture and uh, like the ornamentation, so that we show something which is both familiar and new, and also the story we're telling, like this whole fun fantastical world is completely based on uh, Eastern European and Bulgarian legends and folklore, which is. As I said, I mean, it has never been done before and never been shown in animation, which I personally think as a designer is a huge waste because it can be very interesting. And I hope we make it very interesting. Awesome. And uh, which was uh, the biggest challenge that you have into producing uh, the Golden Apple? Hmm? Oof. Where to begin? <laughs> Uh, just so the fact that um, series like that haven't been done in Bulgaria until now uh, is is like it wasn't it, it is still is a big challenge on its own because 
um, we don't have any options for government funding, for example. Um, so it's kind of like you have all those doors shut in front of you when it comes to the production, the actual production aspect of these things. And there is another thing as well that uh, like you, you, you can have the biggest passion in the world and you can be a fantastic artist and so on and want to put it in that project. But there is only so much time that you can work for free. You need to <laughs> you need to find funding and you need to uh, be able to live off that. So basically, I think we are now facing our biggest challenge. We have reached the point where we can't continue work on the Golden Apple series unless we find funding. So we have now we are now accumulating all the work that has been done for the past three years, and we are putting it out there, putting it to the world, and saying, "Look, this is what we can do." without money. Now imagine what we can do if we have money. So we are going to try and convince um, big production and distribution companies and so on that this is like something new and unexplored so far, but it is also something, um, how should I say, it's like it's commercially very, very viable to produce. So I think this is our biggest challenge so far. This is from the production side, from the designer side. I'm sure there's completely different challenges. Uh, I think it's we have similar things as well because uh, all of our designers they work after after hours basically, and uh, it's it has been it takes quite. I mean, animation usually takes a long time, and when you're working like nine to six, and then you work on something else, it takes a little bit longer. Uh, but it's been really fun, and people are really putting all their like all their passion and energy into it. And uh, I think design-wise, it was really hard to find something to base the style on, mm -hmm. because it's yeah. I mean, Bulgarian costumes, like the our traditional costumes, which uh, our characters should be wearing, they're really ornate and they're they're like full of tiny details, which make them really awesome. But since as I said, they haven't been presented in animation. We had to go like through the entire process and figure out how to exactly show them and keep them Bulgarian, but also make them easy to animate and uh, like uh, stylize them enough so that they look cool, but we can do them in production and not like take a year to do one character or something. So that has been really fun. And uh, oh, how about the cooker magic? Yeah, and also developing the, the cookie magic, like the guys with the magic bells and thinking how to show that and because it's something connected with sound and uh, we actually even the thing we we made for the trailer and we were talking with our technical animator there and like two or three days before the trailer was uh, to be released, we're like ready and we're just doing cover grading and stuff and I'm just working and I have this really awesome idea how to improve the cookie magic and I write to her Hey, I have an idea how to make it look even better. She's like, well, yeah, we'll do it for the series. <laughs> <laughs> we won't do it for the trailer. We won't go back now. So it's it's stuff like that. It's, it's a process which is really, uh, you always get these ideas which you want to you wanna put into it, you, and you want to put in the series, but you, we, without the resources, we just can't invest enough time to like get our really cool ideas out there. And that's why we need, we, we turned to Kickstarter, and that's why we made the trailer. Actually, the trailer was something which our team, uh, we were working for like a few months on it, I think. I don't know how long it took us to make it, but we just really wanted to show what we can do so that we can like improve on that later on. As Eddie said, like this is what we can do without any funding. Imagine what we can do if we actually have the proper funding and time to work on it. Oh, I have this really good story. So basically, <laughs> it's um, it's like, Three days until the deadline that we have set ourselves for the trailer because um, obviously I've set like I don't know how many weeks of insurance after that but the deadline is the deadline and we need to finish it because I'm on the production side I'm about to launch a marketing campaign in the media in Bulgaria so we need to be ready and one of the animators gets sick of course <laughs> In the right time she gets sick. She gets sick to the point where she can't draw. She can't work. Yeah, like she can't do day, I think. Yeah. Lovely, totally lovely. <laughs> and everyone, like our resources are stretched super thin, super thin. There's like three people or four people animating 
stops and there's like so much work to do still and she gets ill and everyone's thinking how the hell am I going to complete my own work let alone cover for her as well <laughs> me on the production side I'm like this because there is nothing I can do to help I'm not an animator myself and at this point um, it was like I, I asked them to gather together and to basically make an executive decision can they compensate for that work and still get the trailer delivered in time or should I stop everything that I've set in motion like media wise and so on because I could at this point I still could stop it and like delay it with a few days or a week or however time is needed but I just needed to know then and they all gathered together and they decided yes we can do it we will do it okay fine so the days passed and <laughs> it's the last 24 hours before that guess what happened they couldn't do it so uh, there was a lot a lot of work which still needs to be done so what's happening is it's it's a saturday i think yeah it's a saturday evening at about half ten our lead animator and uh basically our second lead animator they're still it's like half ten in the night they're still animating and they're, we're, and they're like yeah we're ready we're going to stay the entire night and they have been working crazy hours like i can't even explain to you like 16 17 hours a day crazy and they're like no we're going to stay and we're going to finish it and i'm like no go and sleep no no, no we're going to stay and finish it okay so eventually i go to sleep the next morning at about 9 30. so it's a sunday before the launch 9 30 in the morning i turn on my skype because all of us are communicating online i turn on my skype and i receive a message from one of the few animators a girl named petya the message is from what is it half four in the morning yeah, something, something like, like that. that and she's saying yeah me and the other guy we're still here animating <laughs> we're, we're talking like at this point we're just talking shit just to keep each other awake la, la. but don't worry it's going well as i'm reading that <laughs> It's 9.30 in the morning. As I'm reading that, she turns, she suddenly starts writing to me as well. She's awake and she goes, oh yeah, so we stayed up until about 20 past 6 this morning. And, you know, we went to sleep for a couple of hours, but it's half 9 now and I'm here to continue. <laughs> and I'm just thinking, oh my God, these amazing people, they're just like... And they actually, they managed, they managed to, to, to finish all the animation and it wasn't... Like it wasn't really that late. We managed to do all the compositing after that. We finished the coloring and everything. And it was just an amazing effort on their behalf, especially for Petya, because she's like one of the best tattoo artists in Bulgaria. And she's like swamped with work. I mean, if you want to get uh, an appointment for her to uh, like make a tattoo mm -hmm. for you or something, you have to sign six months in advance. <laughs> so that's how she's ridiculously popular. And she's been working in her tattoo studio and then animating after that and then working in the tattoo studio and then animating after that and it was just an amazing effort of, uh from uh, from all our team basically oh and she is a mom of two children yeah and she also has two wonderful children which she takes care of and it's great she's a machine and the rest of the team is like that as well and this just i myself get surprised how like every day i get surprised how incredibly passionate people are about this project and how much they believe in it and they really want it to happen and at this point when this happened I thought to myself wow wow they're really putting everything into that and yeah I mean that's how we basically made our trailer yeah <laughs> so it was uh, working nights and stuff but yeah hopefully we we managed to find uh, funding so that we don't have to do that again yes Yes. We are working right now uh, again in, in our own projects. We got some funding, but and it sounds like uh, a lot of money. But when we put in the work, it isn't really that that much of money. So, uh, for example, uh, uh, we won another prize. Uh, Two weeks ago, and since then, because uh, I'm I'm fulfilling the role of Elena, <laughs> pretty much I'm the one 
in charge uh, of marketing and all that. <laughs> I've been uh, nonstop like uh, taking advantage of the price and all that, trying to to make an out noise, uh, trying to get a lot of people, as much people as possible, to see the project. Uh, much I, I didn't slept like two days in this week. I have this eye completely red because of the stress. <laughs> so yeah, I kind of understand where, yeah. where you're coming from. <laughs> And you're... being passionate about something, it comes with stress. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think so as well. It was, uh... but it, it, it's something really. I mean, everyone from the team kind of now that 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 time has passed. I mean, we saw Patty like a few days ago, and she was really happy, and everyone's like, "So, how is it going? How's the trade work going? And when's the Kickstarter starting?" And I see people really, really like it, and it's really cool. So, when's the project gonna launch and stuff like that, which is. I mean, everyone is really, they're just happy to do it. I mean, I'm happy to do it, and I'm extremely grateful for the entire team because they're really amazing professionals. I mean, we have designers from, like, amazing studios working on this, and they're doing top quality work, and they're doing it in, like, after hours, and it's amazing. It's just really nice to see something like this happening and be part of it as well. And be the creator of it as well? Yeah. <laughs> Because I, I mean, so many people pitched in now that it's kind of, I don't think of it as my personal project anymore. It's like our entire project, our entire team working on this. It's, it's something that I, I would have never taken to this, would have never been able to take it to this stage on my own. And it's just really nice to be able to find the awesome people who we managed to get together and basically make it what it is today. And on the other hand, like on the receiving end of that idea, like, I think I speak on the behalf of the entire team when we say that it is amazing to have to have a passion like that and to have a passion project and to really believe in something and have a goal and chase after it. And it's great. It really is great. Uh -huh. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. uh, definitely. Because uh, I, I work like this uh, a lot. How, and sure, there is a stress. This I, I don't know. It's a stress focus on not letting all the other people who has put the work down and yeah. wanting to be this successful. Exactly. Uh, but it's a different kind of stress. Like I, I, I will, I will not have been able to put all that kind of work if it, I, if I didn't care about the project. So same thing here. I, I think that happens as well. Uh, same thing here. I mean, uh, I usually. I used to do advertising like a few months ago. I used to do adverts for TV so that I can like pay my rent and stuff. And I completely stopped to focus on the golden apple. And when I see how much, how many hours people put into it, because I, I usually concentrate on background design and I like the whole art direction. So I did all the backgrounds and I saw how like the animation and all the hours that went into it. And I was like, oh my God, my backgrounds are not good enough. They're doing so much work. I can't let them down with my backgrounds. So I started redoing some of the backgrounds, and it was, it's just a crazy kind of, uh, you're feeding off at the other people, and you're feeding off the fact that everyone is putting so much effort into it, and you don't want to let anyone down. And when I was speaking to Petty and Stani, they, they had the same thing. They were like, oh my god, this looks so good. I don't want to let anyone down. So they were putting the hours into it. And it's kind of, it's a really nice, uh, I don't know, symbiotic process, maybe, of working with so many people on something that you all really want to see happen. Oh, and there is another thing as well, considering nothing like that has been done in Bulgaria so far. It's like you're setting up, you're setting the benchmark. So when you're setting the benchmark and you're coming out there in front of the world with something that it's supposed to represent, you know, the first coming out of that region. Yeah, and it's like you, your culture and stuff. It's... Yeah, you definitely really want to, you really want to make everyone proud and you really want to set a good benchmark and say, look, you know, we are not in France where, for example, in France the animation is like top level and they have these amazing universities and schools and um, they have the, the studios and so on. It's, they're fantastic, fantastic crew. And we're thinking we, we don't have this, but we still want to play with the big guys. So we're really, really going to make that extra effort in order to prove ourselves. Awesome. Also, uh, pretty much something I understand pretty, uh, 
really good as well uh, in my countries and in Latin American countries uh, I, I think uh, art is not seen like the best choice for professionals and I see a lot of families and friends putting down other artists uh, because they want to be illustrators because they want to be animators like right now uh, there are a lot of people uh, uh, still is a small group but there are people who are trying to do something bigger however I see a lot of people who has an amazing talent but since they have been put down through all their life uh, they have like uh, low self-esteem in their work in what they are even though they are amazing like what they do is really amazing but they don't believe it uh, I think you can understand a little bit th uh, about that since Bulgaria again uh, there are not many people doing animation and illustration and stuff uh, what will be your message for these people uh, the, who, for the people who are struggling in countries like ours uh, who who, in which art is not like a, a good option, uh, but they still want to do something great, but they are not really that secure about it. Oh wow, we can so understand this. It's, it's yeah, the same. Absolutely the same yeah, yeah, absolutely the same. And well, what I can say is, go for it. Go for it in art. Well, you know what? Just I'm gonna say it bluntly. Art is a business if you know how to do it right. And don't think for a second, like, don't listen to those perceptions which say that, you know, an artist can't support the home, for example, or that kind of stuff, which is looking at it purely from the business side. Yes, it can. Art is a business. And now that the world is so global and so small, you don't have to be constrained by, for example, the immediate, um, your, your immediate surroundings, your immediate even country or anything like that. If you want to do art, like uh, m measure yourself, compare yourself with the best that you see out there, the best that you see online. And there is work for people who are dedicated and passionate and talented and willing to put in the effort in order to do what they love. Yeah, I completely agree. And I, I had the same thing as you, uh, as you said, when I was uh, a teenager and I wanted to get into art and drawing and stuff. I was really into comic books and uh, I think it was, I'm not sure if it was my father or grandfather and he was like, yeah, yeah, you continue drawing but find a job as well. You know, it's like drawing is not really a job, it, you can't really survive on that and uh, luckily I didn't listen to them so it's, <laughs> it's fine. But that's the thing, it's, uh, drawing is, it's like, uh, uh, it's like a craft, it's like, a, you, I mean, at least I kind of treat it even like a sport sometimes. I mean, I, I mean, I do a little warm up and then I do different exercises for different things and I practice it every day as well so that you, you don't lose your form. So having a kind of a, that kind of attitude towards art and towards illustration, that's the kind of thing that makes it different and that's what doing that, you can support yourself and you can also have a really nice lifestyle. I mean if you're talented and if you put the time and time and effort into it because there was a if that's the other thing because there's like art and art and there I have some friends and some people who are like you know I wait for inspiration and uh, you know sit in front of the blank canvas for hours waiting for inspiration to strike there's I don't even believe in inspiration you just have to sit down and work and that's how inspiration comes so there was this uh, I think he's an animator in Disney and he used to say I always I paint only when I have inspiration, but luckily I always get inspired between nine and five every day. <laughs> so that's the thing. It's you should just it's just treated like a craft and practice a lot. Practice every day. Every, practice every moment you can and find the best day that you can online. Find the best people in your field. Like if you want to do character designs so or backgrounds, find the best people that you can online and try to measure try to measure yourself to that. And also put your stuff online, put your work online, because internet is huge. I mean, uh, when I was growing up in Bulgaria, if it wasn't for the internet, I probably would have never made it to the level where I am today, because I just learned everything online. And even when I left, because I studied in England, and uh, even at university, I was still like, I worked in the, li in the university library, so I had access to all the computers, and when there was no work, I was just browsing blogs and stuff, and reading articles and tutorials and picking up ideas and 
that's basically how you advance. That's I think that's the, the, the way people can advance the most, can advance most in this day and age. Oh, and always seek feedback. Always yeah, and always feedback. seek feedback and take right. feedback as well. Don't be protective of your work. I don't remember, I think it was, uh, I think it was the guys that were doing design on the on Star Wars that were like drawing on their, on, on their colleagues' drawings on top of them because, you know, you don't, you have, you, you can't be attached to your work. I mean, you have to be, you have to be passionate about your work, but don't be attached to it to the level that you don't want to change it or you don't want to accept uh, feedback on it. So it's always, it's like a process. And there's another thing about art, which I think you never stop learning. So there's that attitude that you should never stop learning. So you should always try and improve and uh, get your game better and try different things and different approaches and different colors and different styles and just always develop. And it's really cool that we have the internet because you can always search for inspiration there. So don't listen to people who tell you you can't support yourself with that. I mean, you can work online and you can live in South America and work for, uh, I don't know, Australia or like New Zealand or whatever and it could work if you have the skills, it could work. Yeah, the market is there. The market is definitely there. You just need to put in the time and effort in order to be good enough. And promote yourself as well, because yes. even if you're really good, if no one knows about your stuff, it's, it's yeah, it's a waste. You'll be good in your kitchen, that's it. <laughs> definitely. Uh, and when is the app, a golden apple coming? <laughs> I know that. Uh, many people must be asking you this question like a thousand of times every day, but uh, when do you think it's going to come out in a Kickstarter? Well, uh, this is very difficult to give a prediction for something that doesn't even have a, like uh, of the financial support yet, but let's just, let's just put it like that. If someone drops a bag of money in front of us and say, look, you can start production tomorrow, we can and we will. And it's going to take us eight months to deliver the first episodes and a year and a half to deliver the full season, which is 24 minutes, 24 episodes, uh, 24 episodes, 24 minutes each. So an hour, uh, a year and a half is the total production time. We are ready to start. So we'll see. That's basically what we've been doing the last three years. It's like doing a lot of the pre-production, defining the style, the characters, the stories. We know the entire plot line. We know where the season starts. We know where the season ends. I even have my favorite episode, although we haven't even started working on them. And we have so many ideas, and we have the designs and stuff, but we just need the financial support to be able to start. We also have the core team established, like these 25 people. A lot of them will continue to work on the project, and that's the only thing we are missing. We're missing the funding so that we can take it to the next step and actually start production. Yeah, now we're trying to get to as many people, reach as many people as possible all over the world so that we can prove international interest towards that project and find that funding. And then we'll be able to see it in a year and a half. Hopefully, yeah. Yes. Awesome. Although I, I think you're doing a, a really good job since I saw your fan page and it, it already has like more than 22,000 people there following you. Including yeah. myself. So. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. <laughs> uh, so, so I think it, it's coming to a, a, a really, uh, it's going to the right way. I think. Hopefully, it's going uh, the way it started. The same way it will continue. Hopefully, yeah, we're doing really our best in promoting it and trying to get people interested in it. And it, it really helps to see that even like we we make it we made it as far as South America because. It's, it was really cool to get your email. It's like, oh, wow. Yeah, we're <laughs> That's so really excited. nice. Yes. So thanks for showing an interest in the project and in, like taking this interview. Yes, thank you. Awesome. So uh, thank you for being here and giving us uh, your advices on this. Uh, I think it's going to be really valuable for a lot of people here uh, who are still not confident enough in the starting because all the other reasons that other people are telling about. But I definitely going to be following the Golden Apple as soon as the Kickstarter campaign starts. Uh, I, I'll make sure that everybody knows about that the campaign is up and, and that they can help make it happen. 
Thank you. Thank you Thanks. so much. <laughs> well, is there any last advice that you would like to give to people out there? Okay, first. Um, eat vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, well, I'm just gonna repeat the, what, I, what I said, like just uh, browse online and always find, like try and find the best person you can in your field and measure up yourself to that. Try, strive to be like the best people in what you're doing. Like the best uh, character designer or illustrator or like uh, background designer, just always browse and don't stop learning and developing. That's like the most important thing, I think, in this field. Definitely. and. Be, and eat vegetables. Be, eat vegetables. <laughs> but also be humble and be patient because these things take a lot of time and you're going to get knocked so many times. But it just takes it just takes one to be able to succeed, but you're gonna need to fail the ninety-nine times before that in order to finally succeed. And all of these times is going to be experience and it's important to take away something from every every setback. So just don't give up. Awesome. Then thanks a lot for being here and for giving us your time and all your knowledge. It has been an amazing experience and an amazing interview. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for the invite. Yes, indeed. It has been lovely. Okay. So this was the show. And uh, take break action.